to what's there's relevance in the financial sector. Back to laziness. I think the rigidness of the structure, the rigidity, sorry, um, the structure, when they stop looking for things such as the bubbles, it meant that they kind of overlook the fact that something might be, um, a financial crisis might be coming up, they just thought, things are going well, what we've done in the past is working, we'll keep doing it, growth will continue, and we'll be fine, whereas they didn't listen to those people who were saying, oh, mm -hmm. something big's happening, something bad's going to happen. They go, oh, well, we're sticking to our structure, we're sticking to our principles, therefore we can't go wrong. Exactly, and I think so, another important thing is, what's it, when things are going well, what's the incentive for someone to say, to, to say, oh, wait a second, we should slow down there? Because once things are going well, there, in no official institution is there incentive enough to say, wait a second, this we need to slow down, we need to do this. There is no incentive whatsoever. You don't listen to the guy who's exactly. saying. You don't. I, I, can, I understand that, as in, from a human's perspective. But from, you know, a, a That's policy... It's job, isn't it? Huh? It's job is to take it. Exactly. It? So you should be doing don't it. Don't listen to the guy who's trying to end the party. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, wait, let me, one more, any more thoughts at all? I feel like I've missed something out. Uh, also, I think, I think another important point is that um, our, out of all of the banks, so out of, not all of the banks, out of the most important central banks, um, so the European Central Bank, the Bank of England, the Fed, Federal Reserve, the Bank of England was the most concerned about moral hazard, about if you're, con if you're continually, b continually bailing out banks, what, what are the long-term effects of that? Because you're giving them a constant safety net, so they're not responsible in their actions. How far do you think you need to balance the idea of moral hazard with the idea of the role of the central bank as a lender of last resort? Because I think Merlin King, more than any other, not, well, not Governor Bank of England, but any other you know, man in charge, was concerned about moral hazard and its consequences. Number one, I wonder why that is, and I, number two, I wonder how much, how would you guys think, is, should there be a balance between the sort of long-term environment you're creating for banks in the financial system by bailing them out and supporting them, and the sort of the role which we expect from central banks to be a lender of last resort? Because I think, personally, he was a, they were a bit, especially in the early parts of the crisis, they were, moral hazard was too big a problem for them. They took it too seriously, but I think, personally, because earlier on in the crisis, what was needed was action, you know, to prop up a, 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 a derailing system. So what do you mean by moral hazard problems? This is not really an economics question, this is sort of like a philosophy question, a lot of philosophers are away. But yeah, this is yeah, sort of... I guess it's easy to say in hindsight that they should have just done a big kind of bailout to the banks, but when, when in that time you can't let them, you can see how bad it mm. was possible. Yeah, I think that's, that's really important. But I wonder, did he, did he not actually see how bad it was? To not use the word the Quidditch crisis in March 2008, did he not see how bad it was getting? But now he's saying this is the worst financial crisis you know, we've seen in how so many years, he said. But then, then he didn't say the word liquidity crisis, he didn't say the word credit crunch. So it, what, should be, it should be more of a priority to stop a bigger crisis than to be morally just far more small. Exactly. And I think, when, I, I don't know if I gave the legally clean debate enough like, importance. I, I just, I'll just briefly explain it again and see, just focus on one question. Because it's the idea that Bubbles can, you can allow bubbles to grow by not doing anything and clean them up after. That's quite simple. Um, but my question is that, is it enough to say that bubbles are hard, is it enough to say that bubbles are hard to see so you don't have to do anything about any imbalances you spot? Because that's basically the cop out for people like Greenspan, and that's why people, people like me, look at them, not Venom in Paul Friedman's eyes, but look at the way, you know, he doesn't care, he's really trying to say Greenspan's money you should throw eggs at. So, do you think that that sort of stance that you should let but you should you shouldn't let bubbles build up, but bubbles are in the in the realm of central bank control? Well, it's not that's not the view anymore. But what did you think about that? I know this is a weird question. Yeah. Well, it's I was not really a green fan, but more with Merman King. Like the way Brown said, like, oh, let's end boom and bust. Then surely, as part of his role, if he's going to be as part of that, should be to stop housing bubbles, stop bubbles like this, and let them come down gently. So. In that sense, he might have done the right thing because he didn't stop boom and bust until the massive bust. <laughs> exactly. But I think another thing, another, because I, I don't have a problem with Merlin. I don't have a problem with Merlin at all. But, 
But I think another another key area of criticism we could say. Well done, Emily. Another key area of criticism we could say. I don't actually know where I was going. I forgot where I was going. Um, That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> another key area of criticism. Where am I going? Um, someone finish that sentence. I don't know where I was going. What was that? I just don't remember. I don't remember where I was going with that. Been in the no, it wasn't completely in the bath. No, it was, it was, okay, here's an easy one. If the inflation, so we know, we all know that the Bank of England has an inflation target of 2%. And in May, in, in 2008, uh, no, 2004, Mervyn King said that, you know, the horizon that a uh, central bank has to keep that target, in, 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 when, when faced with sort of financial crisis, the horizon, so the time span, uh, central bank can go without um, hitting that target rises. But to be 5.2% um, infl to, for, for inflation to be 5.2% and then to launch a quantitative easing program when it's quite it's a, one of the principles of the inflation that is a monetary it's a monetary phenomenon. So for inflation to be there and for you to launch a program of money growth, what are you doing? Basically <laughs> what, what what are you because he, I think one of the biggest things in monetary policy you have to say that you base what you do on, on past successful actions. So, number one, when has quantitative easing really worked in the UK? And when has quantitative easing not led to inflation in the UK? So, for, for, so he's going against two things, really. He's, he's, um, he's pretending, well, I don't know if he's pretending, I'm sure he believes that he's sure that quantitative easing will work, and he's also sure that quantitative easing won't lead to increased inflation. What do, you, what, what, what do you think is the thought process behind that? How do you think we can you know, criticise that? <clears throat> How is points of easing going to work with no other central bank to do the same thing? Well, it's not, well I think it's quite easy. It doesn't, it doesn't, the success doesn't depend on what other central banks do per se, to some extent. But it's, it depends on how fluid the financial system will be. Yeah, because just pouring money into it isn't going to mean that the system is fluid at all. So I think that my, my, I thought you were you saying something. Hmm? I thought you were just opening your mouth. But no, <laughs> no, literally, I thought you were saying something. Okay. Um, I just want to conclude. This is short, I know, but I just want to conclude on final thoughts on Mervyn King. Any, I haven't spoken too much about him, but any final thoughts on Mervyn? Because I think that so, Keegan, uh, do you have any more information on what he's talking about? No, uh, not really. Well, the specification was the top of the lecture on current affairs. Uh, Michelle hasn't given you any more information. I, I, uh, okay, so top because you'll be on the call. You'll be on the call. So yeah, you think? I think that would be a massive part of it. Yeah, I know it's got a good price. We've talked to him before. How does it sort the country out? Basically, yeah. Well, I hope he doesn't dumb it down. So it's like I reckon. I reckon. I reckon. No, I, I don't think we're going to be able to. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If he dumped it down, he'd spend half of the Spanish concepts. That's true. He's definitely not going to dump it down. He's just talking to the facts before, and he said, you're speaking to a very loud person. Okay. I mean, we can't film it, apparently. He says, he doesn't even speak to that. Yeah, I can film it. No, 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 because it's no way. No, no, no. Not just, he doesn't want us to film it. He doesn't want anything he says to be on record. And there was also a last clause that, um, nothing about inter something about internet, so it's going to be we can't write a statement saying. Uh, just have King just said that the, 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 <laughs> Twitter. Yeah, hashtag, Twitter. 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 hashtag Merlin King. So I don't know. You need to because literally just about an hour ago, Mr. Well, well, Morgan. Yeah, Mr. Morgan says has such a big impact on marketing. Exactly. So, so imagine. You can, you can, you can, I can I can understand. Imagine it's causing it. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, the PA said something about like restricting what's said on the internet, restricting what's said. So everything is off record, which is so. Do we not say met Mervyn King today? We can't say, I don't know. See, I don't know if you're going to say Mervyn King is a real fuck. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know what's going to happen there. But it was quite clear that everything should be off record. But yeah, that's basically, that's basically, I hope you will have a better idea of what sort of issues will really, you know, prod Mervyn. Really get to it. Yeah, thank you all for listening. Sure, thank you.